Hello, in this video I'll be teaching the difference between IK and FK. Now I know I promised I'll do a walking tutorial last week, but I thought it would be better to cover IK and FK this week instead, as we will be using it a lot throughout this series. IK and FK sound so confusing, and when it was first explained to me, I was really confused. But after playing around with it for a while, did I begin to really understand what it was all about, and why we need IK and FK switches and things like that. So. I'll be attempting to explain IK and FK in a very easy to understand manner and hopefully take away that confusion in understanding that beginners tend to have regarding IK and FK. FK or forward kinematics is basically where the child bones follow the parent bones. So any adjustment you make to a parent bone, the child bones will also follow along. Therefore, if you need to pose an arm or a leg in a specific way using FK, Usually you would have to rotate and move each of the bones to get the look you want. So for this reason, I would consider FK to be quite dumb. If there's a certain pose you need, you will need to manually adjust all the bones accordingly. Now I say this as if it's a bad thing, but it really isn't. As an animator, you have full control over the exact pose of your character using FK. This is like manipulating an action figure for example, to get the exact pose you want. IK, or inverse kinematics on the other hand, uses a special IK bone. This, this IK bone can be positioned anywhere and the child bones will all follow along and naturally bend like a chain. IK allows you to quickly position your character's hands or legs by simply moving the IK bone to the desired location. All the bending of the arms or legs will be done automatically by the rig. Now I don't really know how, I think it must be some kind of mathematics or algorithms or whatever, but for this reason I call IK smart. IK can cut out the time for animating compared to having to manually adjust the bones to get to the pose you want, since you only animate one bone, which is the IK bone. So when should you use IK and when should you avoid it like the plague? With IK, it's best to use it when your character leans on something, say for example a wall. In this instant, you set the IK bone on the wall and any other movements of the body will not affect the position of the hand on the wall. This will not be the case if the hands were FK. Another example is when a character grabs onto a moving object. Say for example a steering wheel while the character is driving. It will be very very difficult to keep those hands on the steering wheel when using FK. Ah! Ah! Another example is being grabbed on the arm or legs by another character or object. So basically, you can sort of see a pattern here. You only use IK on anything where the character's arms and or legs need to stay stationary regardless of body movement, or when it's controlled by another character or object. One final one that I added here, and this one only applies to legs, is walk cycles and run cycles. Quite frankly, using IK for the legs makes animating the walk cycle far easier and more efficient than FK. Now I learned this the hard way. I used to use FK before and this sort of explained why I got the gliding feet problem. The, some, sometimes the legs would go through the ground as well. Uh, these, was, these were the days before I accepted IK in my life. So when should you use FK? Basically for anything else. Anything where the arms or legs does not stay stationary regardless of body movement or isn't controlled by external forces. So things like throwing a ball, kicking a ball, fight scenes, waving of arms, shaking of legs, and so on. There's just too much to list. <coughs> FK is great as it gives you much needed arcs. Remember those 12 principles? I recall that arcs tend to provide a more appealing and realistic look to your animations. And FK naturally just gives you that. IK, not so much. If you use IK for normal character animation, you will have to check frame by frame or enable ghosting to check that the arcs are good. Luckily, the latest Rigify allows IK FK switching. This means you can easily switch between IK and FK while animating. Allow me to demonstrate. So you can see that we have our FK set up over here, as you can see. If I rotate here, you can see that the child bones also follow along. In this case, the lower arm and the hand. 
uh, we can go ahead and change this to IK because if I move the IK bone, uh, nothing's happening. So to change from FK to IK using this rig, we have a panel here called the FK IK, which is the FK IK switch. So to do that, we, we can select any one of these bones, doesn't matter which. So I'm just going to select this one. And then I'm just going to drag this up here. And now the rig is controlled by the IK. So if I move now, it's not affected at all by the FK. And if I select this, it is now moving by IK. So now the animation is controlled by this one bone. With of course this extra thing here as a support to get the bending orientation correct and that kind of stuff. The elbow target. Um, yeah, so while you're animating, you want to change over from FK to IK. How do you do that? Well, let's just go back to FK again. You can select any one of these bones to change from FK to IK. And say you have this arm that's going from here. And then I can just say I uh, lock rod scale. And then go to 30. And then he's going to come here. Like that. So I'll just go I lock rod scale. And then at this point, I want him to change over to the IK rig. So to do that, usually on the newer Blender versions, and it's not, I don't have it on this version, which is a bit of a shame. But on the newer Blender versions, you can uh, snap this IK to the FK. I think I'll have to fix that before I do the next walk cycle. But yeah, so I'm just going to quickly do a very, very quick pose of this. Just position this into place. Just do a quick I lock or scale. Actually, I'll just do an automatic keyframe, doesn't matter. Just rotate into position. It's about good. Now I can um, it's all in position. Let's just quickly see that FK animation. Goes up. Fair enough. Has that nice arc. As does as you as you do with FK. So now I want to change to IK. To do that, I have to key here a value of 0. And then on the next frame, I want to key in a value of 1. So you want to get, or you can do the other way. You can go one frame before and key it 0, and then come one frame above and key it 1, but it doesn't matter which way. And make sure that they're one frame apart, because that's the quick IK snapping feature. If you wait a few frames and then just do it, like if, if you start on frame 1 and do 0 and then key here frame 1, it will blend from FK to IK, which looks odd. So you have to make sure that they are only one frame apart. All right. Um, and then we, after this, you have after this your rig is pretty much controlled by IK. So I'm just going to select the IK rig. Oops, that one. You can confirm by seeing this value here. And then I can just animate this the, however I want. Just move it there. So when I play back the animation, you'll see that we have an animation that combines both FK and IK purely by animating the FK and IK switch. And we, I know it's a horrible looking animation, but uh, at this stage, we just want to showcase the idea. Uh, we will be using FK and IK switches throughout this series anyway, so it doesn't matter. And yeah, that's pretty much a demonstration of FK and IK in Blender. And that's it. We can now move on to walk cycles, which will be next week's video. As usual, if you have any comments, suggestions, etc., please feel free to drop a comment below. Also, please like, share, and subscribe, as this gives me motivation to keep making more tutorials. I hope to see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.